My background is I, I, I grew up in a family that was oriented to natural medicine. My dad was an eye doctor, my mom a registered nurse, and our family doctor, who I was named after, had done 20 years of hospital-based research on nutrition, like original studies on vitamin A, and also energy medicine. He worked with Steinmetz, a very well-known physicist at, at General Electric on energy medicine. So I actually decided not to go into medicine, but into optometry, uh, following my dad's footsteps, because back in the 1970s, there was no integrative medicine specialty. If there was, I would have gone that route. But uh, I knew that I could get away with doing some work with nutrition and natural healing in, in the optometric field. So a lot of the work that I do is with blinding eye diseases for 30, 40 years. I've been helping people reverse blinding eye diseases that are irreversible according to the textbooks. And uh, we'll have some of our books on display downstairs. But uh, we work with the whole person rather than treating a disease. Your body is designed to heal. It's uh, designed by a great architect, engineer, creator. So the body is self-healing. If you cut yourself, it's granulation tissue that forms that heals that. It's not the band-aid that heals it. Uh, aspirin doesn't actually heal a headache. Studies on, on headaches and aspirin show that if you take an aspirin for a headache, yes, it reduces the pain that day, but actually increases future headaches. So it's suppressive. So we help people extract themselves often from, from suppressive medicine, uh, dependency on, on pharmaceuticals that really aren't healing. Everything that's healing, I believe, is in the natural environment. So we source nutrients, herbs, phytonutrients from plants, and we combine those in products like the Spike Shield uh, based on the need of our client, our clients. So we're inspired by, for example, the fact that, okay, we're all being exposed to these toxic spike prone proteins that were put on the, the virus and then also made in our bodies through injection with the mRNA injections and, and through shedding, exposure. We have lots of clients who are exposed to a spouse or close contact with other people and injured by the exposure to the spike protein secondarily. Uh, so the spike shield is designed to protect us in a number of ways, whether it's to it help the immune system defend against a viral exposure of the coronavirus, or uh, also if there's spike proteins in the system or that we're exposed to, it includes proteolytic enzymes that help break down those proteins, uh, binders that help bind the graphene oxide that's in the injections, so we look at the whole picture and, and what, what's being seen in research, for example, a study in Pakistan where they compared uh, black seed, it's a, a, a seed that's famous for, uh, the quote is that uh, it's a cure for everything but death. Maybe not 100% accurate, but the fact that that's a traditional saying uh, tells you it's a very healing herb. And so in Pakistan, they did a, a clinical study comparing black seed to ivermectin and, and uh, hydroxychloroquine and the herb actually outperformed both of the drugs. And I'm not opposed to those drugs. We don't prescribe them. I'm not a prescriber. I am a teacher. I help people learn how to heal themselves and provide the materials that they need. The, the formulations that I create tend to be very complex. In this case, 33 different ingredients. You don't often see that. And these are all made the slow way. They're made right here on the island. Uh, when commercial companies make products well, they may put them in a tablet and they use something called stearates. It's a waxy fat substance that, that binds it together. But the problem is that those stearates also coat the nutrients and coat the lining of the gut. So they would reduce absorption and reduce bioavailability of everything in the product, plus everything that's in our diet. So it actually has a counterproductive effect. Even capsules, commercial capsule uh, uh, equipment that's high speed, they need to add those stearates to most of the products. And there are a few companies out there that, that avoid them completely. Uh, and that's what we've used in the past, but now that we're making our own, we can make sure everything is, is totally clean. But with the enzymes, you don't want to release those in the stomach because our stomach enzymes will digest the proteins that are the proteolytic enzymes that we want to absorb in the small intestine to get into the circulation to break down the spike proteins. So it has to be an enteric capsule, which means it's acid resistant. It'll get to the small intestine where it's an alkaline environment designed to dissolve there. 
But again, most commercial products uh, and many, many drugs, pharmaceuticals, uh, and many, and most enteric supplements use something called phthalates, which are plastics, a plasticizer compound that's very uh, toxic to our immune system. Now, we get exposed to that through commercial foods that are wrapped in plastic, but it can be a hundred or a thousand times more exposure through medicines and, and supplements. So we use a, a, a phthalate-free enteric uh, veggie cap to, to hold the product. Just a, a few highlights. We know how important zinc is. You've probably all heard of that, that we need zinc for the immune function and the challenge is to get it inside the cell. Uh, and, and we know that quercetin is one of the best ways to get the zinc inside to transport in through the cell membrane. So we use, whenever we use quercetin, which is actually the most researched uh, and one of the most common, probably the most common bioflavonoid in our diet, uh, we always use quercetin dihydrate. It's a water-soluble form of quercetin that's like seven or eight times more bioavailable. So it just gives that much more benefit because you're getting more of it in the system. Uh, so, but we not only use that, we also supply the zinc in the form of zinc ascorbate, that's vitamin C and zinc together. Well, the vitamin C also has many benefits in this situation, so that's great. And the ascorbate form gets twice as much vitamin C absorbed at the, at the gut lining because the zinc has two positive charges, ascorbate has one negative charge, so you, when you absorb, when your body says, oh, there's vitamin C, I'll absorb that, it gets two for one. It gets that, the zinc along with it and the second ascorbate. The same thing happens at the cell membrane. So by the time you get inside the cell where, where the most important activities of our metabolism are, uh, including, say, in, in immune cells, uh, you're getting four times the level of vitamin C compared to ascorbic acid. And because it's four times higher and vitamin C is water soluble, it takes twice as long for that to diffuse out of the cell. So you get four times as much over twice as long. So it's equivalent of taking eight times the dosage of vitamin C spread out through the day with a typical ascorbic acid. The little details from 40 years of, of figuring out how do we heal ourselves? You know, how do we, how is it that we don't just suppress symptoms and create other symptoms called side effects, which are direct toxic effects of the thing that we use to suppress the symptom. Uh, and charcoal and zeolite are binders. Uh, the zeolite, some will be absorbed into the bloodstream and bind things like the, the uh, graphene oxide. Uh, I mentioned about the black seed. Uh, and, and I talked about the systemic enzymes a bit. Uh, and then pine needle, you may have heard of pine needle tea. Uh, or also, uh, there's a, a compound, shikimic acid, that's used in a pro commercial product called Tamiflu um, antiviral. So this is a natural source. You can get the shikimic acid from the pine needles. We also get it in a, in a concentrated extract from another herb that's, that's more efficient to get that extract from. So altogether, taking one capsule gives you the equivalent of taking a whole, uh, a good cup of, of pine needle tea. So there's about a hundred, over 150 of these kind of formulas that we've put together. Now this actually happens to be the one that's moving off the shelf the fastest the past year because obvious reasons. A lot of people injured have the long COVID, where they're having trouble recovering from a cold virus because it's, you know, it's been weaponized with these, these uh, spike proteins. And then many of the formulas, including this one, have this series of, of herbs and nutrients that I use to increase the bioavailability of all of the other ingredients in the product. Increase, for example, uh, Moringa. Anybody know about Moringa? You can grow it here. Tremendously nutritive tree, good protein source. And uh, there's a bioflavonoid in Moringa, uh, which we're not able to get as a separate extract, but we are able to get a 100 to 1 concentrate of the Moringa leaf. So we're concentrating that bioflavonoid. And the research shows that this bioflavonoid actually stimulates the uptake of all nutrients, all the vitamins, minerals, and amino acids. It, it tells our body you know, somehow this tree is created to help us 
with absorption in, in the gut of our nutrients. So there's a clue if you have moringa available or you can grow it. Uh, adding a little bit of that to your, your diet is going to increase your nutritional uptake from the food. Uh, licorice is used in about 80% of traditional Chinese herbal combinations. The reason is that it helps to harmonize the effects of the other ingredients. So we're going to use that in, in the mix because we're putting in a bunch of different herbs, all targeted at a particular function, in this case, targeted at the multiple toxic effects of the spike protein, proteins, the graphene oxide, etc. cetera. Uh, and then we have ginger and piperine. Those are two of the three ingredients that are used in Ayurvedic medicine in a, a product called Trikatu that's also designed to stimulate uh, local circulation and absorption of nutrients in the gut. Sometime, if there's time and interest, I love to talk about uh, the, the, the deeper philosophy uh, that I've come to around all this because, you know, when, when you start healing and reversing blinding eye diseases that the textbooks say are irreversible and get a letter from a Harvard-trained retinal specialist saying, I've never seen this in the textbooks, it doesn't happen, but, you know, the scar tissue is clearing in the retina, the vision's coming back, this person was legally blind, they didn't do any laser treatment or other treatment at the time. So, uh, being a scientist, uh, Ivy League trained scientist at Dartmouth, uh, I, I really love looking at not only the holistic side of healing, but also the, the science of how is it possible, you know, this creation that God has created where our body can heal itself, how does that work? Because, for example, we know there's lots of studies on, on prayer and healing, and it works where you have control groups, double-blind, double masked control groups, that we call as an eye doctor, uh, where you could have photographs of a group of people, divide them into two groups, and have a prayer group, and they pray for healing for one set of photographs, and the other set is the controls. Nobody's praying for the, those people. All it is is a photograph. There's no name, no diagnosis, no location, no phone number, even no contact other than through God knows everything, right? The angels know who that is, is how it literally works. And it's, it's similar to how we're working with our remote clients. We don't take blood tests. We don't, we're not measuring the material substance in their body. We're actually communicating with our clients on a mental, emotional, spiritual level uh, uh, one of the main tests I do is using myself as a surrogate, which comes from surrogate testing with a mom and a baby. Uh, the, the testing I do actually originated in, in Germany in the 1950s with acupuncture, readings of the acupuncture points before and after treatment with acupuncture, because they wanted, you know, with the German mindset, we want to use electronics, we want to measure and see if we did it right. So they found that they could measure the acupuncture points if the energy was too high, the, the flow of electricity at that point was high, so there's a lot of energy there. There's too much energy. We call that inflammation. If the energy is low, that's where we see degenerative changes. There's not enough energy to, for maintenance, and there's a perfect balance when we're in balance, when we're in harmony, when we're in health, when things are working together coherently as a, a team within the body. Um, and so um, I will contemplate that client, I have their photograph, I have their history, and I'm taking on their information in my body as I think about them just as you would if you're praying for someone, you're connecting with them. And I mean, mothers know this best of all, again, it's where the testing originally came from with surrogate testing. You test a mother and you see what her acupuncture meridians are doing, say, okay, well that makes sense with her symptoms and everything. And then the baby wakes up and she, the baby's in her lap or breastfeeding, and you can retest the mom with the baby in the mom's field and moms are empathic. They're tuned in to their children, uh, even more than them, I think. You know, we're connected. They come from, we come, everybody comes from a mom. <laughs> mom knows. Mom knows, yeah, even if they're out somewhere, it's like, huh, why am I worrying about them? Where are they, what's going on? Something happened. Um, so, so you test the mom with the baby in the field, and now the mom's readings are completely different, instantly, as soon as the baby's there, within a centimeter, through a vacuum even, so it's an, energetic, a, a photonic or light communication field, just like if, you, uh, if you're familiar with Curlian photography, if you put your finger or a leaf 
on the photographic plate and you run high frequency electricity through it, you'll see this energy field where the, 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 the photons, the, the path of the electrons is altered by the body's electromagnetic field. The, the technical term that's used for this is biofield. Uh, back in the 90s, that's the term that was chosen by the National Institutes of Health. So we call it biofield analysis. And it's amazing to me, still after 40 years of, of learning different ways of doing this, we have ways that work through the internet and other ways that work non-locally based on the human consciousness and others that are technical-based non-locality. And non-locality is a function of quantum physics. So the idea and the general idea of that is, well, quantum is very, very small, yes. But the properties of the quantum world show up in our human scale, macroscopic world, when we get to consciousness and spirit. Think of the spirit, your spirit is one. It's a oneness, it's a whole, it's unity. It's not separable, right? It acts as one. How is it that we, you know, that we, we see and we hear and we feel and that's all unified? It's one of the, the, the big unanswered questions in, in psychology and, and uh, neurology uh, called the binding problem. But the spirit is the binder. You know, a, a body without a spirit isn't conscious at all. And, and studies of near-death experiences, out-of-body experiences, show that the consciousness goes with the spirit. When the spirit is out of the body, a person might have had typically a heart attack, and their body's on a gurney in the hospital, and the spirit has floated up into the corner of the room is the typical place, looking down at the body and not identifying that that's me, it's like, oh, that poor person looks like somebody had a heart attack. But this is me, the spirit. What's the seeing? In fact, the spirit sees 360 degrees around and 360 degrees a full sphere. We're not limited in the spirit by the apertures of the biological body suit that we're experiencing this life through. So it just fascinates me, you know, as a person who's interested in spirit and who's interested in science and interested in healing. Pinecone. Pinecone? Pinecone. The pineal? Third eye. The third eye. The third eye, yeah. It was way back in history. He's oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the seat of the soul was called by Descartes. Right. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Descartes was interesting. He, he's the one who came up with this idea of duality. I'm sure it wasn't the first thought of it, but that there's this world of consciousness, of information, of spirit, that's not material. Because I can think about a star and it doesn't take me light years for my thought to get there, it's there instantaneously. And, and again, studies on, on remote viewing, remote healing, show that there's actual energetic changes at that remote place. When people are uh, healing uh, like animals in a cage 3,000 miles away, when the actual healing happens, you know, for the animals that are, are healed, they can measure quantum effects in the field around that animal's cage at the time that it happens. Same with remote viewing, there's actual quantum connections. So think of it as a wormhole. I think that's how it works. The spirit body, as I've come to contemplate and understand it, uh, comes from a type of mineral. The best understanding in, in conventional physics you can look up is called Bose-Einstein condensates. It's a state of matter that's different from solid, liquid, or gas, or plasma. The, the plasma of physics comes from the plasma of biology, and they're both electromagnetically uh, charged and, and moving uh, uh, fluids or, or gases. Uh, but the, the condensate was given the Nobel Prize in 2001 for the research that showed that it exists. Bose had proposed that it should exist, but then other, other people later on did the research. So, but the physicists are, are always thinking, well, in the laboratory, we have to go down to almost zero degrees Kelvin to, to accomplish that, to study this thing, this condensate type of matter. But the modern alchemists, uh, including the, uh, the one who got worldwide patents on, uh, on 12 different minerals, uh, have shown, and, and in their research, they find that this, this or a similar state of matter is the substrate of consciousness. So there's about 12 minerals in the, in the transition, we could call them transition metals, but this is a non-metallic state of those transition minerals. Gold, you may have heard of white powder gold, you may have heard of 
monoatomic mono 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 minerals or monoatomic minerals or ormus. So there's, there's, it, this is not standard science, but it's, it's part of God's standard reality. How did he create a spirit that's immortal? Well, the condensate state of, of matter can hold an electrical charge, an electrical movement, or it, it actually has movement that's called phonons, so light and sound both in the spirit body and consciousness are moving as at the speed of sound, and that's how they're bound together, the binding problem. Uh, I'm probably going too far out for, <laughs> no, right for, for many to follow, but that's okay. So again, there's lots of videos and, and happy to, uh, to share the ideas. My next book is going to try to explain more of this. And, and all the books refer to it because the, the models that, that, that I apply clinically include this understanding that we have a real spirit body that's, that's immortal, that's super conductive, like the quantum world, super fluid, so it can move in and out of the material body with a, a near-death experience, we know that. More importantly, it can move within the body. If you have a pain in your knee, we have two choices as a spirit. We can, we can go, we can contract away from it, ah, and that's a natural defensive response. You know, it's like, oh, we want to pull away from our hand in a flame. Uh, but we can also help heal that by sending our healing intention, just like you could pray for a, a, a relative who's sick. It's like a prayer, it's a contemplation. Sending your healing intention surrounding that area with that and, and being uh, very receptive to the sensation because the senses give us information. Why do we have symptoms? The understanding in homeopathy is that it's a, it's a, a signal, it's a clue of how our body is trying to heal itself versus in kind of Western material medicine, well, that's the problem. You have a symptom. Okay, we can turn that down. Don't listen to that. <laughs> Don't heal it. If we go through the pain, consciously, we get to the other side and we heal it. The, the, literally, if there's a blockage, in oriental medicine, they understand pain as a blockage of energy flow. Say there's a blockage of energy flow in a nerve. Maybe it's pinched by something in the joint. And we send the spirit minerals there, they're super fluid. They can carry that energy past around the jam. Around the, you know, it's like a, a traffic jam because we're trying to fix the highways. Oh, well, there's a detour. Well, the mind can send the detour so the energy doesn't have to be blocked, and that, that stimulates the healing. So what we see is uh, when, when we analyze what's happening in, in people's bodies is, with one exception, the thousands and thousands of test people and animals that I've tested, the one exception was a horse <laughs> on my brother's farm in New York, was his, his uh, prized stallion. Healthy, healthy as a horse, literally. I couldn't find, there was nothing out of balance. This horse was in complete balance. It was in the summertime in a pasture in New York. A very happy horse. Well, this was a double blind test that my sister-in-law sent. She's a medical doctor and she likes to heal her horses. She's a physiotherapist, a, a, a physiatrist dealing with healing injuries. The horse was in, another horse was injured. She sent the two horse, uh, in this case, hair samples. It's what I used to work with. I like photographs better now because it gives my mind, my consciousness, something to, to hold on to. Uh, and so I tested once, like, there's, I, I've never seen this. Even with a healthy baby, you know, they, there'll be a flower essence that represents what they're struggling with. You know, they, they, they want to use silverware like they see the, the rest of the family using. There's some sort of frustration, okay, and there's some balancing essence of, of flower essence or something like that. Uh, the other one was a sick horse and needed some remedies. So what we see is usually several layers of stress that the body's trying to heal. Now we've been through lots of issues in our life and not all of them have been completely healed and done with that, right? We carry a lot of trauma and toxicity, stress, damage, scar tissue throughout our body. It's still there, but see the spirit is the intelligent part. And it knows, for one thing, what our intention is. What are we trying to do? If I 
choose to do something different in my life, I'm using different pathways. I'm calling on different functions. And therefore, there'll be different functions that are the limiting factors that are blocking my ability to do that thing. So based on what I'm doing in my life, there's my body, my spirit's gonna prioritize usually a few, one or a few things. The most I've ever seen, I think, was 21, and a, a man who was dying, basically. Uh, and we were able to turn that around in, in, within one month. Uh, the acupuncturist who referred him said, oh, his pulses finally are coming up, and he had done a lot of really good work. Uh, so when we, when we give the things from nature that reproduce a state of harmony in the body, like a good acupuncture treatment does, and you're taking that, those herbs and nutrients on a regular daily basis for about a month, we, we see about a year worth of reversal of aging and degenerative changes. And again, that's how we're able to uh, help people reverse blinding eye diseases and many other things. We have a website called ill2well.com uh, that, that we've put up recently a whole bunch of our uh, case studies on various things, including a recent uh, work with a cow on the island here who had a big tumor on its eye, and a year later, it's a happy cow. So the body can heal a lot of things. I mean, talking about even cancer, in the medical literature, there's over 3,000 cases of spontaneous remission. In every case, there's a fever, which increases the activity of the immune system. There's always bacterial activity, which in Western medicine, we say, well, that's an infection. But if you knew that, hmm, I have this infection and a fever, but, you know, we all have cancer growing in us these days. I mean, one out of two people will have it diagnosed at some point, but it takes 10 years for it to grow to the size that's diagnosable. So maybe we don't want to always suppress the fever. I don't think, I, I don't think the body's stupid. And, and the spirit that's running the show is super, it's more intelligent than our conscious mind. Our conscious mind can handle, you know, they, they estimate whatever, 100, 120 bits of information a second. I think they're, depends how you define consciousness. They're thinking like language thinking, I think. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, if the heart has a brain, how does the heart fit into it? So fascinating, yes. The heart should, should lead. Right? The, the heart, there's studies of uh, showing slides. Some of the slides are just, you know, neutral or nature, nothing stressful. And others might be a snake or fire or somebody injured, car accident. When those stressful slides show up, the, I'll, I'll get to the, the bottom line of, the, of all the studies they've done. They found the heart reacts before the computer selects the random number to determine what kind of slide would be shown. So the heart receives information from the future. Well, how is that possible? On a quantum, in the quantum world, time is not like it is on this level. And so for the spirit, spirit can receive information from the future. I mean, what the heck is prophecy? Either, either you're, you know, Western material science and scientists and say, well, that's not possible. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not possible in your thinking, but guess what? <laughs> First time you receive a prophetic vision about your life and it comes true two years or 20 years later, which I've experienced, uh, yeah, maybe it's the science that is the problem. <laughs> I can quote the Bhagavad Gita on that subject. Sarvasa Chaham Ritasana was told, I am situated in everyone's heart, says the yeah. Supreme Personality. Yep, yeah. Christ lives in our heart. Yeah, we can get in trouble with our head. Well, that makes sense, or I'm going to do that, I want that. But the heart, you know, in Oriental medicine, the heart is the emperor. It's the, it's, it's the one that brings all the rest into harmony. Think about emotions, the emotions of the heart, uh, hope and love and, and gratitude. Those are, are very centered and desirable emotions, generally. And in Oriental medicine, they say you can have excess joy uh, in the sense of, you know, the person could be hyper. But uh, other emotions like anger in the liver, that's, you know, we want to get back to the heart. Thank you so much. Thank you.